Okay, so I have here a Japanese paper balloon. It's called a camafusin. So you can see that it's just made out of paper. So now you can see there's a clear hole in this balloon from which the air can easily escape. Now watch what happens when I repeatedly hit this ball against the table. So as expected, the ball deflated. But now here's the weird paradox and conundrum. Watch what happens now if instead of hitting it slowly against the table like this, if I hit it freely in air really quickly, quick little hits, watch what happens. Okay, here we go, it's fully inflated. Now I'm gonna hit it really hard for a while. Okay, it seems like no matter how hard I hit it, it's still inflated. So why isn't the air coming out of it? There's a clear hole right in the center, so what's happening here? Well, let's try something even weirder. Let's squish the air out of it. So here it is completely deflated, right? But now watch what happens when I hit it over and over again. It's inflating, look at this. <laughs> so now it's just as big as it was before. It inflated itself while I was hitting it. So what is going on here? How can a paper balloon with a hole in the middle inflate itself by hitting it? Now before we continue with the video, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the new mobile game Raid Shadow Legends. And the best part about this game is it's totally free. Raid has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. Look at the level of detail on the graphics, it's pretty amazing. If you download it today through my link, you get automatically 50,000 silver. And the coolest part is if you click the link in my description, you'll also automatically be entered into their special launch tournament where you can compete with me and other players for actual physical prizes that will be delivered right to your door. And now back to my video. So now let's hit this crumbled up piece of paper around and see if it kind of unfolds itself like the ball did. Ooh, this is harder. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that was a lot harder. So you can see it didn't really unfold itself. It still just kind of stayed crumbled like this. Well, maybe this is the wrong kind of paper. So let's see what happens when I just crumble up this paper. So now let's cut this ball open. So you can see there's nothing weird inside here. It literally is just a paper ball and it had a hole in the middle. There's nothing in here that's making it blow up besides this paper itself. So now let's see if it comes uncrumbled as I hit it. So I'm gonna crumble it like before and I'll hit it around. Let's see if it kind of inflates or uncrumbles itself. Okay, so it did kind of uncrumble itself. Even though it was cut open, it kind of inflated a little bit, but not as much as before when it was just the small little hole. So it seems like this paper has some special property a little bit different than normal paper. This normal paper didn't do anything. It was too thick and didn't really unfold as I was hitting it. But this thin paper did, but not quite as much when it was just the single hole in it. It's a very thin paper that can hold its form and uncrumble easily. And it used to be thought that that was the only reason why these things can basically inflate themselves while you hit it. But there's actually a really important different phenomenon happening here. And it has to do with Bernoulli's principle. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here's why this is happening. So let's say for example, you have this pressure versus time graph here. So when you first hit the balloon, you have this sharp spike in pressure. So the sharp spike in pressure happens over this time TH. So I'm gonna call it PH and TH here. 
And then immediately after that, you have this low spike in pressure due to the recoil, but it happens over a greater period of time. So this time I'm gonna call TL and PL, the pressure is lower. So high pressure, low pressure, and the time of the high pressure and the time of the low pressure. So the pressure differences in duration are proportional to each other according to this equation here, where P0 is just this initial pressure here. But what we're more interested in is flow of air rather than pressure. So in order for this to work, it would mean that the amount of air expelled is less than the amount of air inhaled to the balloon. So let's say, for example, this low pressure phase is four times longer than this high pressure phase. Well, what this means is that this expelled portion has twice the speed, so the air does leave quicker, but it's for only one fourth the duration. And so what that means is that even though this is a lower pressure during this incoming phase, what that means is that it ends up pulling more air in than it spits out. And so in the end, due to this sharp pressure spike and this low pressure recoil, you actually end up sucking air into the balloon. So when I was hitting it against the table, what was happening is I was increasing the length of this high pressure phase long enough so it ended up being that the air, with, the air was expelled at a faster speed longer, and so we ended up having more air coming out than was going in, so it deflated. But when you do quick little hits, then you end up inhaling more hair, air than you're expelling. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And then head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.